Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, visit two historic South Coast homes, see the colorful and restored Crematic Gate, and enjoy the traditional food at Santa Barbara's Greek Festival. All this and more along with a tour of TVSB's new multimedia center, right now on South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight. I'm Dominique Samario. In this program, we explore what brings our community to life. But in this episode, we're actually going to explore the TVSB Multimedia Center. I'll meet you in Studio B while you check out our leading story about two local important architects who help revitalize the Spanish colonial style of architecture right here on the South Coast. On the blank page, an architect sketches a masterpiece, resulting in a window to their creative mind. Well known for the Spanish colonial revival movement, George Washington Smith created two homes in Montecito that highlight this style, Casa del Herrero, a national landmark, and Los Sueños, a privately owned residence. Today, Thanks to past and present owners, the Casa del Herrero Foundation, and many supporters, these works of art, their enchanting gardens, and unique design will be respectfully protected for generations to come. Some people have had the pleasure of visiting Casa del Herrero, or home of the blacksmith, but few have ever had the privilege of viewing Washington Smith's Los Sueños, because it is a family residence not usually open to the public. For the first time ever, Los Sueños and Casa del Herrero can be compared and admired side by side. After studying painting at Pennsylvania's Academy of Fine Arts and architecture at Harvard University, George Washington Smith discovered Santa Barbara and decided to make it his home. George Washington Smith builds his own house here in Montecito, and people are absolutely excited about this. And what he learns is they're really not interested in his paintings, they're interested in his ability to be an architect. 1918, he starts to have his practice, and he comes into prominence very, very quickly. There is no question that Smith was a brilliant architect, but many overlook the numerous contributions his draftswoman, Luda Maria Riggs, made to his signature style. Many times we don't see her. These are George Washington Smith homes, but I do believe that George Washington Smith understood how important Luda was to his practice. What she is, in many ways, is that invisible fingerprint. She was an unusual woman who worked with George Washington Smith, a, a dark character. She literally, she wore dark, and yet she created these illuminating spaces that are just magnificent. In both homes, Smith and Riggs incorporated the surrounding landscape into their designs, while also highlighting Santa Barbara's rich Spanish history. Most of the house functions as this wonderful U-shaped, so that you emphasize the courtyard, as well as access to all of the wonderful views that you have from the garden. The example of how the gardens interplay with the rooms and how the inside goes to the outside in sort of a fluid state is really evident in both homes. What's so unusual about and unique about this house is that through every window you capture a wonderful slice of the outdoors, a different perspective each and every time as you walk around the house, both in the interior as well as the exterior. It is the beau art style which speaks to people of great wealth wanting very elaborate gardens that were symmetrical including fountains, alleys of trees leading to a viewpoint at the end of the garden. What George Washington Smith has done is he's taken the topography and actually something that was already here. This square pool was a reservoir. Reservoirs were important because of the lack of water here in Montecito. He's created this wonderful intimate courtyard that all these doors can open out into and utilize something that was already part of the land. National landmarks such as the Santa Barbara Courthouse, Mission, and Casa del Herrero need their community support in order to remain open to the public. I really feel strongly that unless you preserve those pieces of architectural mastery, then, then the next hundred years is not going to remember what did that mean in terms of how, where we came from. It's very important so that people can understand the history of our community 
and the history of architecture within our community and within within our country. What we have is an opportunity for us to be able to understand the architect even better, to go back through time and understand the historical nature of the construction of Montecito, of Santa Barbara. It's an honor to be any part of any of this telling of the tale of, of two great architects, two people who loved what they did. Los Sueños and Casa del Herrero are a lasting example of excellence in our city, signifying a deep respect and understanding for art and our community's journey in Santa Barbara. So now we're in our Studio B, where the green screen is literally painted on the wall. And if you think this is a bright spot, check out our next piece, where we visit a recently restored bright spot for the entire city. What weighs 12.5 tons, stands 21 feet tall, and is now more vibrant and colorful than ever before? It's kind of a gateway to the city. It's great. It looks fantastic. It can stay vibrant for many, many years to come. You may have passed by the chromatic gate multiple times on Cabrillo Boulevard. For years, the art sculpture was gaining rust and was in desperate need of restoration. These negative changes did not go unnoticed by the community. We were lamenting how horrible the chromatic gate looked. And so we started talking to the people at the Arts Fund, which is a private nonprofit in Santa Barbara, and they told us the history of the chromatic gate. The statue by Herbert Beyer has faded over the years, and Herbert Beyer is known for his color, and it was a little dismaying to everyone in town that it was looking so poorly. Herbert Beyer, a famous artist that studied under Kadinsky, designed the chromatic gate. He spent the last 10 years of his life living in Santa Barbara before he passed away in 1985. It was 22 years ago, in 1991, when Paul Mills, the longest serving art director in Santa Barbara, brought the chromatic gate to Santa Barbara's East Beach. At the recent unveiling of the renovated sculpture, Paul Mills's children reflected on what this day would have meant to him. I, I was trying to think what he would have really felt like today. And I think that uh, just as a person, Paul Mills would be quite emotional and very moved by what you've done. He'd just simply be so grateful, so thankful, so relieved and so touched that you cared and that you could save the chromatic gate when he couldn't. While Paul Mills and Herbert Beyer are no longer here, the chromatic gate lives on, fully restored and to be maintained for years to come. But this process was not an easy task. It took a lot of hard work and community effort. A few years ago, there was no money to restore this chromatic gate. And so uh, people like Patty to Dominic and the Arts Commission really searched far and wide. And, and there were many community partners that came together. We were promised if we raised $48,000 that the gate could be restored. In 90 days, we raised over $60,000, and all told, we raised over $78,000 for the restoration and the permanent maintenance of this gate. While raising the money took an enormous amount of effort, some would say that the actual restoration of the sculpture was an even more difficult task. There was much to do in order to achieve the exquisite result. Here's a little taste. Get permits, set up scaffolding, porta potties, fencing, scrape lichen, dirt, and moss off the top of the sculpture, sand down the top coat of the sculpture, discover that there was more rust and metal damage than early inspections revealed, and repair that by more sanding, grinding, sandblasting. Fill in the damage, smooth and sand it again. Clean every inch of the sculpture again with acetone to remove dust and residue. Spray three coats of primer onto the surface of the sculpture to ensure a long-lasting surface of paint to adhere to. Now, sand it again. Fill in any imperfections. Sand it one more time and clean it one more time. And this was before the painting even began. After all of the effort from both the restoration team and the community, the finished product looks fantastic. And Paul Mills' children believe that their father would be very pleased. It's moments like today that meant so much to my dad and my mom. Moments when the boldness and vibrancy, the bravery and intelligence of contemporary art could bring very different people together and challenge them 
please them, make them think and discuss and feel. And most dearly, they knew that these moments needed a lot of donors who really believed and really cared. The gate says that art is for everyone. And the gate marks a space that's beyond profit or obvious use, that's dedicated to the idea that art can bring life and possibility to hearts and minds. The gate looks refreshed and vibrant, and also reflects the unity and strength of the Santa Barbara community. Not only was a historical work of art restored, but a beautiful meeting place for residents and visitors was recreated. A place that frames all of the life and natural beauty that surround it. Welcome to Studio A, our fully HD 600 square foot studio. Come on inside. Whether it's a full band, a talk show with a live studio audience, or anything else you can think of, Studio A has got you covered. And up next, you should check out our footage of the 40th annual Greek festival, where there was plenty to do, see, and of course, eat. Have you ever felt like traveling to Greece? Well, in just a few moments, we'll take you there without even leaving Santa Barbara. I'm here with the St. Barbara Greek Orthodox Greek Festival, known as the Santa Barbara Greek Festival. We're sponsored by the St. Barbara Greek Orthodox Church. And we're celebrating our 40th annual Greek festival, which is a major achievement. We're very, very proud of it. Uh, this festival was started by my mother 40 years ago. She founded it as a big picnic that you could put on for the community. It was a one day event and eventually became two days. Aside from the folk music and traditional dance, one of the main attractions to the festival is its authentic food. Just enjoying myself working here in the booth. We're selling a few good things here. We've got uh, t-shirts, as you can see, aprons, and uh, the main attraction so far has been the food. We have uh, bread made by a local baker, as well as uh, some local honey and olive oil from Sparta. What makes Greek food so unique is the distinct flavor. Uh, you can tell when it's, when it's really authentic and uh, when it's made fresh. If the delicious Greek appetizers don't make your mouth water, then maybe the course meals will. Yeah, we start out over here in the marinade. We soak the, soak the chicken and the uh, souvlaki, which is the shish kebab, in a special secret marinade of Italian herbs and Greek herbs. And after that, we put them over here, we put them on the grill, as you can see, very hot here. They, they go on the grill and then we flip them over. And we check them for temperature and then we have to do our own, uh, of course, our own taste test to make sure they're, they're good and they are, they're always great. And then uh, we serve them up, we put them in the hot pan and we serve them up on the counter over here. This is the line over here. And we serve them up the line. We have this year, we have the uh, souvlaki, which is the shish kebab, the chicken, we have uh, baked lamb, and we have uh, salads. We have uh, the Greek filo dough, tritopitas, with the cheese in the middle. And then we also have the spani kopita that has the grape leaves. And we also have uh, the uh, baklava, baklava. So we have that as a dessert type. So, and I've been doing this for about 15 years now, and it's getting better, it gets better every year. I've been chairing the pastry booth for festival for the past 38 years uh, with another friend, Andriana Colindrianos. We are uh, serving today uh, many pastries, uh, baklava, which is the most popular pastry. Uh, we also have kurabiades, which are the butter cookies with butter sugar on top. We have uh, honey dipped cookies with a little bit of walnuts over them, dipped in honey, uh, as well as we have our traditional Easter cookies uh, with a little bit of sesame seed on top, and it's wonderful to dip in your coffee every morning. And then we also sell in our Greek cookbooks, which of course are very popular. Our butter cookie that I mentioned with a powdered sugar on top, this is a traditional a holiday cookie for the holiday, Christmas holidays, that every household has. Packed with lots of fun, family entertainment, and authentic food, it's no wonder that the Santa Barbara Greek Festival grows each year. These walls might be empty right now, but not only are we having our grand opening, 
we're also debuting the new TV Santa Barbara Art Gallery, where we will be displaying the work of local artist Michael Fish Fisher. So come on by and check it out. But until then, check out this piece where TVSB went to the Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens for their Trails and Tales event. If you're looking for a beautiful place to hike, and you happen to enjoy taking your best doggy friend with you, the Trails and Tales event at Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens is a place for you. Because it promotes that the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden is always dog friendly. It gets local vendors that are canine friendly to a centralized area. It also supports all of our horticultural and conservation and research programs at the garden. All the proceeds raised will go directly to the garden's mission. And it keeps you and your dog healthy by walking around five easy walking trails. We all have tricks and games we like to play with our pooch. These are some stories from local dog owners on their favorites. My favorite thing about Bogart is also my least favorite thing about Bogart, which is his stubbornness. This one right here will roll over immediately as soon as you get close to her just to get her belly rubbed. And this one will dig underneath the covers so that she, she can be covered. If you're snuggling on the couch, she'll go to whoever has the covers. I like how he greets us. He just runs up very exuberant, jumps up on this little wall, and he just, just can't wait to say hi. He goes and gets the paper for us. He can do speak. I can pretend to shoot him and he can play dead. He can do shake, high five. Chappy loves to run and he loves sea kelp vessels and his code word is mash it up. And mash it up means take the leaf or the flower or anything and have fun with it. He's uh, really fun. He plays with his two cats at home. I love how mellow she is. She'll just lay by my feet for hours on end and then when we go to the beach she just bursts with energy and runs. William, come front. Finish. Down. Dead dog, show them a dead dog. Can dead dog roll over? Can you roll over? Sometimes we need a fun and safe place to care for our dogs while we're away. Camp Canine offers many services for such a situation. We have doggy daycare, grooming, training, um, uh, full spa services, and overnight lodging. It's a good spot for dogs to come that just have a great time. They're safe, they're um, divided into appropriate play groups to keep the small dogs and the big dogs separate. Um, nice place to leave your dogs if you have to go run some errands or you're going out of town, you know that they're gonna have a blast. They pull their owners in the door. Santa Barbara is well known for being dog friendly. Here are some dog owners' favorite places to take their pups. Probably Shoreline Park or the San Barbara Botanic Gardens. The beach. He likes to go to the um, Earl Warren Showgrounds when they have a dog show there. We love taking her to the beach, especially in Summerland at Loon Point. We just love taking her to play fetch on the sand and the water. We like going to the dog park. Most of the time he just likes going and annoying all the dogs. A field for four, and the winner is... It's not an issue of my favorite place, it's their favorite place. They have an addiction called Henry's Beach and they have to go there every single day. Uh, we like to take Wally to uh, Devereaux. My favorite place is in my own neighborhood because I bicycle with her. I can't pedal as fast as she can run, so it's really fun for both of us. I actually bring him here to the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden. Trails and Tales is more than just about having fun with your dog. It's a place where you can rescue one and bring them to a good home. Anyone who's thinking about getting a dog for their home or their family or for companionship to adopt a dog and if they're even in a position to adopt a senior dog. There are a lot of senior dogs that are unfortunately being left in empty houses and abandoned because people are losing their homes and so it would be great if people could reach out for more senior adoption. So head on out to the Trails and Tales event at Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens. Well, that does it for this tour of the TVSB Community Media Center, but it doesn't compare to seeing it in person. So come on down and check it out. And until then, be sure to continue to join us for South Coast Spotlight, where we look at the arts, culture, and community that make up the South Coast. If you have an idea for a segment, email us at info at TVSB .tv. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get out and enjoy your South Coast.